All right, welcome back. This is part four of the little restoration I've been doing on this center console I got off of Craigslist. If you missed the last part, I did a lot of reinforcement and fiberglass work on the console itself, um, and then did some fairing and painting of the actual console. Got it looking nice and shiny. Of course, there's a lot of imperfections, but as I mentioned in the previous video, it's kind of the style of this boat. And then I went ahead and power washed, sanded, and painted the actual deck and the gunnels with this total boat, total tread, non-skid deck paint. And by the end, it looked really good. It looked like a completely different boat than the one that I bought. So that video was actually filmed at the end of last summer, so it's been quite a while. And since then, I've been watching a lot of videos of people using this EVA foam or EVA foam flooring. And I think it looks really nice, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. So I purchased three rolls of the EVA foam along with three rolls of this border, and that's what you see laid out on the deck right there. This is a much cheaper alternative to C-Deck, which is extremely high quality and much more expensive, especially if you're working in kind of an odd shape and you need it customized like I do here. I purchased three rolls of the EVA foam at 90 by 32 inches for maybe 70 or 80 bucks a piece, and then three rolls of border for maybe 20 bucks each. So both the EVA foam and the borders have their own adhesive, but again, this boat is far from perfect and the deck has its imperfections. So to get a really good bond, I'm gonna use this contact cement as well. So I start just kind of laying pieces out and, and this day involved a lot of this, just kind of staring and thinking of different ideas, trying to decide what patterns I wanna use. And then I grabbed some builder's paper and decided to make some templates before I did anything stupid and started just cutting the foam. I made this little diagram to kind of visualize what I'm doing. This is a top-down view of the boat and all the blue shapes are kind of obstacles that I have to work around. So the circle at the bottom is the stern hatch and that gives you access um, into the hull itself. The four smaller circles represent the leaning posts um, where they attach to the deck. So I'll have to work around those. The big box is the console itself. The smaller box in front of it is the cooler. And the smallest rectangle up top is the bow hatch. That's where I keep my anchor and anchor line. And those two small rectangles on the sides are kind of little stringers that come up and I'll have to work around those as well. So the first piece I'm working on is gonna go on the port side and it's gonna go all the way from the stern halfway around um, that circular hatch. It's gonna avoid that little rectangular depression I have in the back that kind of collects any water that might be on the deck and goes all the way up until about six inches or so behind those leaning posts. So I'll make a template for that and then I'll have a mirror image on the starboard side um, with a little gap in the middle to kind of let water run through. And then I'll include two strips of that border on each side um, to try and make it look a little bit cleaner. Planning everything out. Florida looks cool. How does it stick? Just have it has a really strong adhesive on the back, but since this is like uneven, I yeah. got contact cement. Oh nice. Wow, it looks really good. It'll look great. Might like, stop it like where this ridge is, round mm -hmm. off, come down, and then do another four. After a quick check-in from my two older brothers and getting their approval, <laughs> it was time to finalize this template and get working on the actual foam itself. I rolled out the foam and started making my measurements for a rough cut. The nice thing about this EVA foam is that it's really easy to cut and shape however you want it. So after marking out my measurements for a rough cut, I just used a straight edge and a really sharp X-Acto knife and took my time working down the line to minimize tear out and it actually cut really nicely and separated really easily. Here I'm just double checking the measurements of the width to make sure that it is consistent across the board before cutting it down to its final width, which I believe in this case was around 30 inches. 30 by 48. After that, I took some, I think it was 120 or 240 grit sandpaper and took my time working around the edges. And this works really well if you take your time and are pretty delicate with it. And it makes the edges really clean, almost like a little round over to kind of ease the transition from the edge of the flooring to the deck itself. 
Then I grabbed my compass and started tracing circles until I got the diameter that I was looking for to cut out that semicircle on the right side to fit around the stern hatch. So then after confirming in my head 10 different times that I was doing the right thing, I outlined the semicircle with the proper diameter onto the foam itself. The idea here was to leave around a half to three quarter inch gap around the outside of the hatch before the foam actually starts. So I got that traced out and I took my time with a sharp pair of scissors, cutting out the semicircle. I sanded the edges and then it was time to see if it matched up. All right, let's see if it worked. And when I laid the piece of foam out on the deck, I was somewhat surprised to find that it actually fit perfectly. All right, now I just need to round out those edges and then uh, we've got this first piece on. All right, it's now the next day. You can see I've already curved the edges of the big foam piece right there. I forgot to film that, so you'll get to see how I do it here with the edge banding that's gonna go next to it. So after measuring and cutting it to the right length, I just used a small glass that has around the same diameter as the edge banding itself. And I trace a curve around the outside of the glass. And then I cut that curve with a sharp pair of scissors so there are no sharp corners. Then I took it up to the boat and I sanded all the edges clean, again, giving it that nice little round over, you can see there. Then I took my time cleaning the entire surface, making sure there was no debris so that I could get as good of a bond as possible. And then I grabbed my contact cement, shook it up a bunch, and it was time to start applying the first pieces. I wanted to get a nice even coat around the entire area making sure I had coverage, especially where the edges would be because I think the edges are the most vulnerable to start peeling. Then I took the backing off, exposing the adhesive on the foam itself and started slowly applying it in place from one end down to the other, making sure not to trap any sort of air bubbles or anything like that. Um, so there are no raised spots and I smoothed it down with my hands first. Then I took one of my shoes and kind of pressed it down in every area, walked around on it a bunch to make sure that there were no air gaps. Felt really good about it. Then I went and put some more contact cement down for the edge banding. In retrospect, I probably should have done this first but I wanted to make sure that that big foam piece was gonna line up with the hatch perfectly. If my measurements were off a little bit, it was gonna be most visible around that hatch area versus right up at the edge of the boat next to the gunnels. I didn't actually get it on film, but I have a bunch of lead blocks that I keep up in the bow as ballast. So I took those down and lined that entire foam area with lead blocks, making sure that there's a really good bond. The length of this piece was 48 inches and each roll of Eva foam is 92 inches long, I think. So I actually had to break open the second roll to make that mirror image on the starboard side. As you can probably tell, a lot of this boat is very homemade and it's very rough. So that circular hatch is actually offset about an inch to the starboard side. So that means if I had just used a mirror image of that same template I had created for the port side, it wouldn't fit. So I had to create another template, cut out the foam, skipped over the cutting and sanding, etc. Once I felt good about it, it was time to apply it, and I applied it in the same way that I applied the port side. What are these weights for? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Jesus, is that just to hold down? Like, to yeah, you want to pass me a couple? Like the corners. And then I applied the border strip and you can see a couple of those lead blocks. And here's what it looks like so far with the starboard and port sides in the stern of the boat done. Design wise, I wanted to create some sort of separation between the back deck and the cockpit area. So I just laid another piece of edge banding down here perpendicular to those first two pieces and glued those down Oh my god, it's so nice. Are you doing it around the hat too or just here? Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. 
Now it's time to start working on the pieces that are gonna go on either side of the leaning posts, traveling about halfway up the console on either side. So I was able to make this from the leftover pieces from those first two sections. The templates were just taking a very long time and I thought I could get a pretty accurate measurement um, just going back and forth. Obviously, as you travel towards the bow of the boat, the deck tapers and gets more narrow. So I need the decking to follow that taper as we travel up. Fortunately, I cut the diagonal in the wrong direction. So this piece is actually gonna have to go on the starboard side. So we'll put that aside, break out the next roll, and we'll make the proper cut for the piece that's gonna be on the port side. So I finish that cut as a B travels across the lens of my camera. And I go and do a rough test fit. Then I round over the corners again with the same method as before. I want all these pieces to kind of have that same curve on their corners. Then I sand the edges, clean the surface and apply. Pretty happy with how this one turned out as well. And once the port side was done, I hopped over on the starboard side with that piece that I had first cut, clean the deck and apply it as well. If you watch parts one and two, you probably noticed that I removed those brackets at the base of the console and fiberglass the entire console down to the deck. And I got a couple comments of people saying that with a console that's top heavy or even just going through some rough chop, the weight of the console can rip that right off the deck. So I really appreciate that feedback. And I opted to re-secure the console back down to the deck so I could be sure that it won't go anywhere. Once I weighed that down, you can get a look here at the stern of the boat looking pretty nice. Very happy with how it's going so far. And as we continue moving up the boat, I'm now gonna do the two sections that will go all the way up till the top of the cooler. These sections are relatively similar to the last two that I did, except that there are those weird stringers sticking out on each side. So I needed to cut out little indents where I could slot in and not get in the way of those stringers. I won't bore you with more of the same, but I was just going back and forth, measuring, cutting, rounding the edges and sanding before uh, applying these two pieces. And this area of the boat's pretty tight, so it took me a while to clean the area and get it ready. We'll weigh that one down, so that's the starboard side. And we'll do the same thing on the port side. And you can see it fits pretty nicely, at least a dry fit. We'll lay it in place. You can kind of see those three sections going down the boat. And here's a look at what we've done so far. The next sections I'm gonna work on are the two pieces that go in front of the cooler up to the bow hatch. So you can see I have them cut, we'll drop them down. You can see how they'll fit right there, with a little gap in the middle. And we got them installed. I then went and cut the piece that's gonna fit underneath the leaning post and got that in on the port side. Then I snuck around and put the starboard section in. There were a lot of corners on this piece, a lot of turns, so I made sure that those were all flush with the deck and got those weighted. To finish it up, I put two small pieces just in front of the hatch and then we were done. I took the boat out and did some fishing with my brothers that weekend. Got some cool shots of big schools of peanut bunker and we caught plenty of flounder, black sea bass, and bluefish. Overall, I'm really happy with how this looks. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for some additions for the boat or things I can do differently next time. And I'm looking forward to continuing to improve this boat. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.